Okay, if you guys don't know, my name is Mitchell. I am a senior at Grandview. I'm a biology major, and I'm the starting right guard for the football team. I grew up in a small town of about a thousand people named Sangster, Iowa. I grew up in a Christian household with a loving and caring mother and a strong, loving father. I'm so thankful for the parents that God has given me, and I'm so thankful for the Christian ideals that they instilled into me. That being said, when I was seven years old, I remember the day that I thought I was saved. This day was just like every other day except for one thing. The teacher called my mom because I stole some kid's glasses and punched him in the face. <laughs> Needless to say, my mother was pretty upset with me. And she sent me right to my room when I got home. And she decided to discipline me the good old fashioned way with a spanking. But right after this particular time of discipline, my mother shared with me the gospel. She shared with me that I needed to accept Jesus or I would be spent forever separated from God in heaven and spend it in hell. Now, as a little kid, that's pretty scary. This, that this one decision meant heaven or hell. This one decision also seemed to make my parents happy, so I just prayed this prayer and that was it. That's all it was in my life, a prayer. I fast forward a few years and the fact that this was just a prayer was evident in my life. This prayer was a safety net in my mind that I, because I had said it, I could do what I wanted and be whatever I wanted. Because if I died, I died and I'd go to heaven. Yeah, because this half-baked prayer I said to make my parents happy. It makes a ton of sense, doesn't it? Well, the result of this was a two-faced life. Where in front of my parents and my family, I was one thing, and in front of my friends, I was a totally different thing. But if you would have asked anybody in my town or my school or my church, they probably would have said, yeah, He's a good kid. I thought I was too. I lived a semi-Christian life where I'd go to church on the weekends, and on the weekdays, I would go hang out and do stupid things with my friends. I never did drugs, and I never drank. Well, that was because I was too afraid to lose football. All the hard work that I'd put in, it was too much time that I'd put in to throw football away on something stupid like that. My whole life goal up until that point was to play football at the highest level I could and have the prettiest girlfriend I could. And seemed thing, things seemed to be going pretty well. I had some big schools talking to me, like Iowa, you and I, Mankato, and I was dating the pretty, one of the prettiest girls in the school. But that talk from those big schools, was, that, that was it. It was just talk. Nobody wanted to risk it on a small town kid from Iowa. I didn't see at the time that God was orchestrating something in my life where if I had to, if I had to say, I would have said everything differently. I was seeing the small picture. I decided to go to this community college called Iowa Central because it was affordable and the prospect to play there was high. The point of going to a community college to play football is to take a year or two and earn a scholarship to a four-year four -year school. But there was one problem. When I got to the school, I had the most experience, sobering experience of my life. I went from the best center in the state of Iowa for two consecutive years to showing up to this camp where 250 other people are fighting for the same spots I was. 120 people that dressed at home games, and 70 people that dressed to travel. Needless to say, it was the first time in my life that I felt genuinely small in this cutthroat atmosphere where everybody was looking out for the number one and number one only. But despite all that, I thrived. I earned the second starting spot at center, and it, but it still wasn't enough for me. I was hungry and I wanted to start. About halfway through the season, I finally earned that starting spot. And the first game I was going to start was on my 20th birthday. I remember the day like it was yesterday. But not for reasons that you would think. About halfway through the game, I pulled around the outside to block the corner. And he put his helmet down and he put it through my kneecap. And he broke my leg. I know. What a heck of a way to spend your 20th birthday. God did this for a reason. I would idolized two things in my life, and that was my relationship with my girlfriend and football. And there God was, kicking one of the pillars that I put my life on out from underneath me. Something that I put so much into was gone. My blood, my sweat, and my tears. Gone in an instant. Now obviously I haven't stopped playing football. But this was God's way of giving me a reality check. And then there was my girlfriend, who I thought I was going to marry at the time. It's almost a year later, after an Iowa Western game. It was her birthday, so I went home to surprise her. When I got home, I saw her crying, crying in a way I'd never seen before. When I asked her what was wrong, she said she couldn't do it anymore, and she broke up with me. 
Boom. It was the second idol in my life that was kicked out from under me. Everything I was clinging on to was gone. Football was gone. My relationship was gone. Only God could fill that void that was made in my life. But I didn't know that yet. I tried to fill that void. I really did. I tried partying. I tried drinking. I tried sex. I tried smoking. But none of them worked. I felt emptier than ever, and I just moved schools. I had no friends, and I was more alone than I'd ever been in my life. After starting for Grandview my junior year, I went home for winter break. And when I went to church with my family, and my pastor said I should find a community of Christians or a Bible study. And I said, yeah, yeah, I will, with no real intention on doing anything after that. Until there was this girl who always hung out in my room with my roommates and I. She said that I should go to her Bible study sometime with her. And I thought the idea of this was really weird, that something like this would be brought up two different times in such a small window of time. So I went. I felt welcomed. I felt a connection, a connection that I'd never felt in my life, something I'd never had in my college experience. Something just drew me in like a moth to the flame. Then that same weekend, Blake invited me out for breakfast. And he started asking me all these questions. That made me super uncomfortable and, and mad and just things that made me question my faith. He planted a seed that day. He cracked my heart of stone and he pricked my heart and it was only a matter of time until I bled out. That entire night I questioned my salvation. That whole night my mind was just racing. So I read the book of 1 John. And I read the verses that cut me to my core. 1 John 2, 4 through 6. Whoever says I know him but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anybody obeys his word and the love for God is truly made complete in them, this is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. I read these verses on January 15th, but I held on anyway. I kept pursuing what I wanted, I kept having sex, I kept looking at porn, I kept drinking. But from that very moment, every time I sinned, I felt nasty. I felt ashamed, I felt disgusted. The things that I thought I loved in my life were slowly becoming a bitter poison and it could not have been more apparent to me. Then on March 14th, after two months of fighting this, on a day that CF was supposed to be 1,500 miles away from home in Florida, and I was supposed to be a thousand miles from home in North Carolina. COVID stopped all of that and forced us to be at home in Iowa. So we all went to the Saturday night services like usual. And I don't know what was said. And I don't know how it was said. But whatever it was, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I knew that I had to go give my life to the Lord and make him my Lord and Savior. But I didn't. I had to do everything in my power not to grab Blake and run out of the the room. I figured I've waited 22 years, I can wait five more minutes. But those were the longest five minutes of my life. So Blake and I went to the church offices and he led me through Galatians 2, 19 through 21. For, though, for through the law I died to the law, so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ that I no longer live, but, I live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live is in the body, in the faith, in the Son of God. Whoever loved, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. I prayed with Blake, and I knew at that moment my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul were the Lord's. Everything I did was to honor him. All that I possessed, yes, even the Prius, was his. <laughs> If I did anything, it was to please and glorify him. I realized that night that the Lord justifies us through faith and faith in him alone. And that if there any way I could fight or earn my way to heaven, Christ died for nothing. He died for nothing if I could do it. But I can't earn it. It's impossible. God is holy. God is a perfect God in all things. So to be with him, his standard is perfection. If I've ever done anything wrong, I had one spot, one blemish, anything that I had done wrong, I can't be with Christ. I can't get into heaven. 
And the only thing that I rightfully earned is eternal separation from God in hell. But that's why Christ came. He came to take my place. He lived the perfect life because I couldn't. He took what I had earned. He took what I earned and he gave me what he deserved. He paid the price for my sin so I don't have to. So that I could be with him for eternity. But he didn't just do it for me, he did it for everyone. So that those who put their faith in him can be with him forever. So here are some of the things that God has taught me. One, that learning to let go and let God take control is not just a one and done thing. It's a daily discipline that requires continual pursuit of him in your prayer, in your time with him, in everything. And it can be taxing at times. And two, that doesn't mean I'm going to live a nice and easy life. I still struggle with sin. I still fall. In fact, in some areas of sinning, I feel like the Lord has strengthened me by beyond whatever I could be alone. But in others, since I've become a Christian, I feel like there's a target painted on my back. And if I didn't lean on the Lord and his promises, I couldn't make it through the day. But over these last few months, God has allowed a growth in me that I never would have thought possible. I've grown so much stronger with my brothers and sisters by my side. And God is using my position on the football field to reach people that I never thought I could. I'm so thankful for the steps that the Lord has put in my life. Because without them, who knows where I would have ended up. I came into college thinking I knew Jesus, but never truly did. And I guarantee you, there's at least one or two other people in this crowd that are thinking the same thing or can relate to this. And if you have any questions, any doubts, anything, please, I'm begging you, come and find me. Come and talk to one of the leaders. Do anything. Just don't ignore this. Don't push it aside. Don't wait. This is your eternity we are talking about. Thank you.